Well, you know, I'm joined by a legend today here down in Pomona, California. Uh, Ed Escudarian, it is an honor to meet you, first of all. Can you tell us about the early days of drag racing? How did it all come about? All right, well, uh, first it was just uh, little hot rods uh, or gal jobs we used to call them, yep. where you'd get together uh, and sometimes it was a club you'd form. And uh, in my neighborhood, it was a bungholes club, and I learned from these older guys that were maybe five years older than me, and they had cars in their garage they were building. Sometimes it would take a long time to get finished. Yep. And uh, then on weekends, they'd go on outings sometimes. One time we went all the way to Ensenada, Mexico, and back. Did you go? Yeah. Well, uh, now, uh... The first drag strip, though, was C.J. Pappy Hart, right? Uh, in Santa yeah. Ana? Well, there was really one before that. Was in, there? Uh, in, uh, at the airport at uh, Santa Barbara, California. Uh, and uh, that might have been before that. Just barely before it, it But right. it was uh, not real well organized. So, uh, well, how old are you today? 97 and a half today. Wow, congratulations on that. That's a milestone, a career that spans Many, yeah. many decades, that is incredible. So uh, we used to have time trials up there at New Rock Dry Lake, about 100 miles from Los Angeles. Right. Now that's Andrews Air Force Base. Oh. And uh, we had an 80 mile category, a 90 mile category, and a 100 mile category. So they get all those three cars, all the 180 mile hour cars lined up with a running start. And then see who could win after about two miles. Right. Well, the first car made dust, and the other guys couldn't see, and got to be dangerous. Some oh. guys thought if I wait long enough going through the, even though I can't see, I might pass them. That got to be too dangerous. So that was sort of drag racing there, but but not from a standing start. We had a rolling start. Yeah. So after the war. They started that drag racing, and that's what made it grow. Okay. And before that, it was mostly just little uh, cars to have fun with, and uh, uh, some guys would never get their car finished. It took so long <laughs> to be at the drive-in with the frying pan, yep. talking about it mostly. Oh, some gosh. guys uh, got a lot of work done, and some guys didn't. Right. You know? So, uh, but it's been quite a career, hasn't it? Yeah, so we were surprised uh, with what knowledge we had gained, uh, learning from the older guys, that we could start a business. Yep. Like I bought my first camp, Ed Winfield, okay. who was born in 1901, and he used to win a lot of races with his Model T yep. in the 20s. And, uh, he was the first camp grinder, and I bought my first camp from him. Really? And when he showed me his machine he had built, I was fascinated by it. So after the war, I decided I'd like to try that camp grinding, and I was hoping I would stumble onto something by accident. Right. And I did, believe it or not. And what year was that? 1948. 1948. Wow. Uh, yeah, they started a uh, hot rod show at the at the Los Angeles uh, uh, Armory. The, okay. It was a nice show, Army. Yep. We had our first hot rod show there, and that's uh, that's when we uh, started the camp camp business. Yeah. yeah. Right there. And, and NASCAR called. They were racing flathead Ford on the racetracks back in North Carolina. And they uh, saw my little ad in that hot rod night. Right. Uh, $10 ad. And they bought two cans by airmail. And all they said was just want two uh -huh. cans by airmail. Right. Didn't know what, how to describe it. <laughs> and then he ordered over and over again. We didn't know why at first. So we found out my noisy cab with no clearance ramps and fast action had uh, high, high torque in the mid-range yep. and they could pass cars and work their way to the front. Wow. 
outside. And I didn't even know why they were fired, but I didn't, because that was the first camp I ever made. Wow, really? Yeah, with no clearance traps and fast action. Incredible. With the flathead, you could get away with that because it had a lightweight valve train. Oh, right. Well, these overhead valve engines, you have to be more gentle, you know. Yep. Because there's a rocker arm and a push arm. So you live in Canada. We live in Idaho. Oh, so Idaho. We're, from, we're from Boise, Idaho, and my father started drag racing with a club called the Bootleggers in 1954. Went to the original safety safari meet in Pocatello oh, at the air base, the, the abandoned air base there, yeah. airport, and ran in 54 and 55. Had a chopped 32 three window coupe and put a percentage of nitromethane in the tank. Yeah. It was one of the first in Idaho to run nit nitro. And uh, yeah, he, he, throughout all these years, eventually he ended up opening a new drag strip. Oh. And we went into the drag racing business with a track called Firebird. If you go to uh but, uh, if you go to the big park, uh, what's the big park? Uh, we have to go through Idaho to get there. Right now. Like Yellowstone? Yellowstone. Right. We have to go through. So do you remember that time? Back yeah, in the yeah, mid 50s? Yep. I remember how we were eating some corn and I saved the cob. I said, there's some cattle in that yard next door. I'm going to see if I'll eat this cow. And they did. Did they really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, they, I had eaten all those turtles off there already. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, it's been quite a life. Thank you right. for Thank sharing you a few moments with us. You bet, Ed.